This is the Comedy's Podcast Show. Every the Weather Boy. Meek Link. Donnie the Detective. And Saint Shamar. Hey guys, and today we're going to be interviewing Mr. Daniel today. He is the leader of the comedy program. He's a really nice guy. You'll probably see him dancing like a boss on Harambe. And here he is, Mr. Daniel Goofball Martin. Hello, Mr. Daniel. How are you doing? I'm good, Harry. How about you? Uh, it's great to see you today. So I have a few questions for you. Do you have any siblings? Yes, I do. Do you care about your siblings as much as the kids at the school? Yes, I love the, my siblings and I love the children at Comedies. What do they do now? My siblings? Well, I have two brothers, two sisters. My oldest sister lives out in California. She's in school to become a nurse. Then my oldest brother, I have one older brother, he is serving time in a federal prison right now, due to be released in another year. I'm sorry to hear that. I have a sister who uh, lives in Philadelphia, who uh, takes care of my daughter, Olivia. And my youngest brother, David, also lives out in California, and he's a physical therapist. Were they nice to you growing up? My oldest sister and my, old, my oldest brother, no. They were very, very mean to me at times. But, you know, that's part of growing up. Favorite memory with them? What's your favorite memory with them? My favorite memory with my family. It's hard to say. It's been, it's been so many. Um, I guess I'll go back to a birthday party my mom had when she was 40. I think she turned 42. And it wasn't a big year or anything. But it was the last time that all five of us were all together for a family picture, because that was when my uh, oldest brother was, uh, you know, for, had his freedom. He wasn't uh, incarcerated. So I kind of look at that picture from time to time and just, you know, think about that, how that was like the last time, you know, and that was almost over 10 years ago, if you put that in perspective. 10 years ago was the last time that we as a family with all five siblings were together. All right, Mr. Daniel, now we're going to ask you a little bit about your job at Comedies. So I'm going to turn it over to Dante to ask these three questions. That's me. Oh, he's going to ask the first. We're going to ask the first. Three, so. What is your average day like? There is no average day. Every day is different. Some days I am helping to de-escalate fights. Other days I'm, I'm taking time to make sure that our, you know, our payroll is good and that our trips, upcoming field trips are paid for and taking care of things that way. And some days I do cleaning. I actually spend time cleaning up after, uh, after y'all students. Messes mm -hmm. left behind. Anybody have a follow-up question to that? What is the best day at Common G's? And what was your worst? The, best, the, worst? the best day is when everybody goes home happy and, and, and exhausted. That's the whole idea of the summer program is to make y'all as tired as possible so you go home and pass out. And that we all get tired too, so we can go home and get a good night's rest. And that's 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 the best days. The worst day. The worst day is when um, people are being uncooperative. You know, especially students when you guys aren't listening to your teachers and um, being difficult without expressing yourself. Because I know we all go through things, and some folks have difficulty um, getting those expressions out, so we can best help y'all. I do many things. I like to garden. I like to play basketball. Spend time with my daughter. She's only one years old, so I like to spend time with her after I get home. Are those activities enjoyable? Absolutely. Otherwise, I wouldn't be doing them. Okay. So, what is your what is your daughter like? She's uh 14 months here. So, I mean months, right? So. You probably don't remember. Nobody knows remembers when they were one years old. But pretty much, yeah. you're whiny. You don't you don't have uh, a vocabulary yet. So whatever you want or you need, you express it by crying. 
or making up a word. Like she, she always when she wants something to drink, she says "baba." Or we're trying to teach her water, but she just goes "baba, baba," <laughs> and whines. It's funny watching them though. You know, she walks like Frankenstein. <laughs> you know, falls over, cries, and that's what they do. They're, you know, when you're one, you're just getting very curious about your surroundings. What is your wife like? What is my wife like? Well, technically, I'm not married. I guess my special other. Uh, we should get married one day, I guess. Um, you know, work, I'm working on that, you know. But uh, she is, she's awesome. She's very smart, and she cares a lot about uh, other people. So now, would you call her, like, ghetto wild, like your baby mom? Like, like just put it, put it as that. My, like, my my baby mom? Yeah, yeah like she, she's my baby mom, definitely. That's my baby mom, you know, definitely. Like, yep. Regardless, like, did you ever propose to her, like, try? No, no. We met in Costa Rica, so we haven't been back there. But I would like to propose there once we get back to uh, to that country. I, I, I have no idea what, what that is. Can you explain that to me? What Costa Rica is? Yeah. Costa Rica is a very small country in Central America. If you guys look at a map and you see where North America is and South America is, Central America is this snake-like land that connects the two continents. And Central America, you have, you have other countries as well. Mm -hmm. It's like that little so sliver, yep. You lived in Philly basically half of your life? No, I lived there for about three years. Lived there for three years? Mm -hmm. Now, when you was in Costa Rica, it was just there since day one and all that. When your mom and pop would just... I moved there for work, Dante, so uh, I had no family down there. Oh. Yep, I was living with a family that kind of became my family. Oh, so you yeah. are you adopted, basically? No, I, I grew up out right oh, outside of Philadelphia, up. but when I became an adult and I graduated college, I worked for a little bit, but then I joined a program that I could talk to y'all maybe about in another interview about the Peace Corps, which is a program paid for by the United States government that sends volunteers to other countries to work on projects. Like you've been here since when you was at Comedies. How long have you working at Comedies and you, where you been? How is it? No, how I long? How, how long? Who has been at Comedies? So, two years. Two years. What what you been? With you pen. So like you go to college basically, or you just be at the college campus talking to all the teachers and all the uh, sophomores and all that. You um, talk to them or you go to classes. I do go to uh, the, the university sometimes to talk to students about comedies and talk to them about like West the, Philadelphia and other things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think what Dante wants to know mm -hmm. is how is UPenn connected to your job at comedies? Oh, okay, okay. How is UPenn connected to the job at comedies? So University of Pennsylvania has an uh, organization called the Netter Center, and they partner with the West Philadelphia communities, and they partner with schools. So the university has people like myself and other schools at Lee, at Huey, West Philadelphia High School, Sayre High School. And in these uh, schools, you have people who are like the Mr. Daniels who help, you know, um, organize and run programming for, for students that UPenn helps to, uh, to, to pay for and help support. What is your goal for the program? For the program is to make Comedies uh, one of the best schools in the city. Very. Why did you want to work here? Well, let's be honest. I did not want to work here. I did not want to work at Comedies. Wow. Wow. Yep. Because uh, I was I was happy at a school that was not too far from Comedies called Wilson Elementary. It was a very nice school, a very much smaller than Comedies. And Wilson closed when the school district um, decided to close a bunch of schools. I think that year, 30 schools were, over 30 schools were closed. So Wilson was one of those schools. So when Comedies came, you know, about, I was very reluctant to come to Comedies because I was so comfortable at, the, at school. At Wilson? Yep, and they had a community feeling there. Area was there. You know, I knew a lot of students. I didn't want to leave those students behind. So it almost became basically... What drove me to Comedies was that, um, you know, I had a daughter coming on the way, and I didn't really want to look for another job. And I, and I kind of thought positive about the change and said this was an opportunity for me to come here and um, work with a whole new school 
from scratch and work for a whole new program from scratch and see see what can be done here. And now I'm glad I think I made a great decision because I met so many good people and at this place. You, and how did you meet all these staff, like Ms. Amber, like Mr. Josh, Mr. Reggie, Mr. Leo? How did you meet oh, all yeah. Them? Well, some worked here before I got here, too. So they were already at Comagees. Mm -hmm. And others I met by... Um, you pen? By pen through Penn, like Mr. Leo through University of Pennsylvania, Mr. So Reggie Daniel because he me. wanted to work here. So, um, yeah, so, you know, you meet people, you know, through different I'm avenues. Um, does anybody have any more questions for Mr. Daniel? Maybe this one right here, number one. Did you go to college? I did. I went to Temple University. Temple? Got my bachelor's degree in criminal justice. All right. So you're saying you was a police officer or? No, I was interested in protecting people from the police. That's why I kind of studied criminal justice. Oh. Uh, so people so, won't have to go in uh, harm's way. That's right. I was very concerned about what we call massive incarceration, which is basically that the U.S. prison system is putting more people behind bars than they are putting people in through college at, at sometimes. So that's a big that's a big problem for our country. So, uh, was it hard to fit in in college? No, Temple is great, and there's a there's a place for anybody. Was it a good college for you? It's a perfect college for me. Oh. Did you ever drop out? Never crossed my mind. Never did. I tried to graduate on time though, and it was very tough to do that. How many how many years you did at, at Temple? I think I did four years at Temple and one year at Community College. So this is a lesson to be learned. When you guys get to high school, you really got to do your best in high school. So you can go to the first college of your option because me, I had to go to community college because I was, you know, pretty much not, not I, didn't have a, I didn't have a plan. So when I, if I wanted to apply to Temple or another school, I would never have got accepted because of my grades at, at the high school level. Grades are so important at high school. Did you make a lot of friends in school? How was your GED? Yeah. Man, what was your uh, GPA, my fault? Uh, I think it was a uh, almost a 4.0. In college? Mm -hmm. What was your best subject in college? My best subject, or I say best class because sometimes we have different classes. Ah. I really enjoyed this uh, class called, um, it was Capital Punishment. So Capital Punishment is about um, putting people to death, you know, um, because of a crime they committed. But the class was only a part of that because the other part of the class was actually going to um, a state prison and actually uh, having workshops with people serving life in prison. Do y'all know what it means when somebody's serving life in prison? Mm -hmm. it, it means they that somebody they did die. something bad, like they killed somebody, but it's my third degree. Maybe, maybe. Not everybody serving life has done horrible things. Basically, in Pennsylvania, if you get sentenced to life and imprisonment, that means you're never going to be able to be outside. You're never going to get your freedom. Because life in Pennsylvania means life, so you're going to die in prison. So these guys, what they call lifers, they're serving life in prison. Some of them were really young when they committed crimes. Some of them, like 18, 17, they made a bad decision. You know, they weren't bad people. These weren't guys going out and murdering, you know, 10 people. They did something in the moment that cost them their freedom for the rest of their lives. So it was really powerful to sit down with them and, and, and hear their stories about, about how, you know, um, they made that choice and... What do they plan to do with their life, you know, behind bars now? You know, and a lot of them are very bright, have earned college degrees, and have um, done some amazing stuff behind bars. That was the best time I think I had, hands down, for any Temple class. Changed my mind forever. Have you ever been behind bars? Uh, no. Almost. I should have been. But uh, luck. Luck really got in the way with a lot of stuff. Like, what, what did you do to get behind bars? Um, I didn't get behind bars, but again, I did. I, I done stupid things, really dumb mistakes. Like what when I was type a kid. of stupid things? Uh, let's see, vandalizing property. What? Uh, yeah, breaking into school stuff. Like if you guys do the stuff today, I can guarantee you, you're gonna get locked up. But when I was growing up, it was a little easier to get away with this stuff. But it doesn't happen so much anymore. What was the hardest part in college? The hardest part of our college? Um, let's see. For me, it was really just uh trying to work and also go to, and make sure I'm responsible for my classes because I had a job throughout college. If you had bad grades, would, they, would it affect? You go into academic probation when you're in college if you have bad grades. So, so you're like literally at college for a long time? 
One more extended time? You could be, yeah. Some people don't graduate on time because of their grades, or other times it's because they didn't plan out their uh, classes. So you have to get a certain amount of credits to get a certain major. So say if, you're, if you want to study chemistry, you know, and you're only taking, and you're taking uh, math, you know, let's say you're taking uh, English classes, that's not going to count towards your chemistry degree. So that's what happens to people. So, did, Mr. Dane, so you went to a lot of frat parties? I, I uh, actually did not participate in any frat parties, I could tell you that. Have you went to a, have you have your own party yourself? I had my own parties, yep, my own friends. Liquor, we weren't frat guys. Nothing against frat guys or frat, you know, anything, but that's just... Why did you have, like, tournaments to, like, beer pong, like, Wii games, tennis? Wii games? Wii wasn't around when I was in college. Oh. <laughs> or, like, games. How about... Like, <laughs> something, like, you could do on the side, like, on the... You'd be amazed. I think college is the most uh, interesting time of your life because you get to... Uh, you meet so many different people... And there is a lot of different things, Dante, that you, you're exposed to. So, I mean, you guys should all really be thinking seriously about how you're going to get to college because every one of you deserves to go and every one of you should go. So what was your best moment in college, like in college? It's been so many. It's been so many. I guess, I mean, I remember I got to, that class was really good that I was telling you about. I got to travel abroad for college. You know, travel abroad means it means you go to another country to study. You take classes, and I I chose this place. I chose Mexico, so I was in Oaxaca, Mexico, studying Spanish and uh, Spanish literature. Like, do you speak Spanish now still? See, si, hablo español. What did you just say? I speak Spanish. What did you say though? That's what he said. I said I speak Spanish in Spanish. Uh, hablo español. Uh, Does anybody have a final question for Mr. Daniel? Yes. What was the first video game that you owned? First video game that I owned that I remember was the, uh, I think it had to be either Mario, between Mario and the game now, I can't remember the name, but it it, became, it had the shooter, the gun. and you Duck was Hunt? James Bond. Duck Hunt. It was like Duck Hunt, I think it was. Huh. Grand Theft Auto? And you, no, it was not. Grand Theft Auto came out way later. I had the, the original Nintendo system, and my older siblings. I mean, then they had you know Atari because they were way older than Dang. I. So, they you know this is when game video games were just starting to really come out and be affordable for people because when they first came out, they were very expensive. But still, it's expensive. I I was kind of probably what in the fourth grade when Nintendo sixty four came out, maybe fourth or fifth grade. Can't were remember. Were you able to play it? Oh yeah, I had Nintendo sixty four. I was a gamer. I was a big gamer. Uh, so. Question: When when you had your video game, was anything? Did you have any like personalities with it? Like, did you have any secrets to unlock things on yours? Because some things they you will have to put in codes and stuff to do. Yeah, you know what's interesting about the games now? None of that existed back then. <laughs> I would have to take the game and unplug it because it would overheat sometimes, or I would have to take the cartridge out because it wouldn't. The game kept freezing. Now I had to like blow it. <sighs> To get all the dust out of it and then jam that baby back into the Nintendo and system it and yeah. it would work. You would pray it would work. We would put a uh, paper clip sometimes to make sure it stayed in the uh, the system. And then my friends and I would be like, yo, this better work. You gotta get this golden eye going. If you were the little kid now, what would be what would be the first thing you would do? Ooh, that's a good question. If I was a little kid right now, what would be the first thing I would do? Um that's too, I don't know. I mean, never thought, of it. never thought about that. Never thought about that. But I know everything that I know now. Uh, well, like us as little kids now, we have a like much common things going outside, having preps, uh, basketball practice and things. People be doing a lot. We uh, people kids be doing a lot. Yeah. So we be having a lot of things to do. But we want to know how y'all have the things to do. We did same things very same as you guys did, but very different too. I think we spent more time outdoors than you guys ever did, number one. I remember spending the whole day outside climbing trees, beating up bushes with sticks. Mm -hmm. To us, that was fun. You know, I, I, we had imaginations that ran wild. You know, and um, a lot of things we can do, I don't know, maybe it's because the neighbors, neighborhoods were a little safer back then, you know. But... Uh, I, yeah, I don't remember really getting into many fights or anything like that. Um, 
it was it was a, it was a lot more peaceful. I think you guys are a lot more fascinated with uh, technology, cell phones. Like we didn't have cell phones. We didn't have these little game systems that you carry around. Oh. So we had to invent stuff. We had to invent our when own you, games. Uh, when you was kid, was there was there um colored TV? Yeah, there was colored TV. I ain't that old, but that's a good question. Yep. Um, how long have you ever stayed outside, like when you were young? As soon as the sun rose up, I was back at you know when the street lights came on. That's when, you know, you might still get that too. I don't know if your parents tell you that, but once the, the street lights come on, we had to be back inside. All right, guys. You want to say? Thank you for talking you. with us today, and hope, hope to see you again. Thank you.